Hi, I'm Rob Hawkins and I've come here to Mills Extreme Vehicles to find out about the development of a new project based on the Mazda MX-5. Yeah. There's nothing there. But it's a 52 kilos. 53. Yeah, 52, 53, yeah. It's heavy. Uh, to me a little bit. To you a little bit. Yeah. That's it. We just bolted it up there to the subframe front and back. Yeah. And that's it. So how many bolts? 12 bolts. Shock absorbers in that's already pre drilled, same front. Yeah. Ready to go? It's good. Right, Stuart, looking at the uh, MX-5 running gear with the, the chassis that you've, you've made on top of it, what exactly did you set out to design and, and how did you go about it? Well, we started off with the MX-5 running gear, which comprises of the front and rear subframes. We left the engine gearbox and differential in situ. The next stage is to get to where we are now, which is to make up a basic perimeter frame. Uh, that will enable me to sit in the chassis and rather than working with CAD, and uh, crash test dummies to work out where things need to be. I prefer to get the steering wheel, get it in the right position, make brackets, take dimensions accordingly, and work a drawing up from it. So I get my seating position, I'm just under six foot, I reckon I'm about average size, I can move backwards, forwards, up or down, get the pedals in the right position, and make sure the framework picks up all the location points for everything mechanically on the front, on the frame, uh, and then we proceed to the uh, prototype chassis. And looking at the, the style you've got here, I mean, I appreciate it's square tube instead of the, the X set, which is round tube, but what's the differences? What, what's the main ideas you had? Is it, is um, it... It's important with a full bodied car to make it easy to attach panels, and therefore using square tube instead of round gives you better location fixing points, so then the fiberglass actually becomes, it acts like a diaphragm and stiffens the chassis. So that's important. Square tube is actually easier to work with anyway because corner jointing etc. There's no notching or burn mounts, so it does make things easier. And uh, this is the 30 mil square tube, uh, which is quite a stiff chassis actually. It's triangulated well. I think it's going to work very well. Which we'll find out later when the structural engineer has uh, done his calcs on this chassis. Right. And do you think the end results will be similar to the X set? Something with no windscreen, something with no doors or anything at all? Uh, it's far more practical. The, the aim is not to overlap with X set. It's to provide a different car. Uh, basically on the same theme of using the MX-5, so we know the running gear is reliable, uh, we know the handling is going to be good before we start, uh, we're then adding a windscreen, a heater, storage facility, a narrower nose, full body panels, a soft top, it's a practical exercise in a way, yes. Mm. Right Stuart, can you tell us about the windscreen? Yeah, first thing to do is choose a windscreen that would fit the job. So in this particular case we're looking for a particular curve, or the cord depth as they call it, We've then got to get the width correct, and within reason we've got to get the height correct. We want to make sure that the driver's vision is not impinged, and um, also we then determine the rake angle of the screen. Once we've got the piece of glass, uh, we then go to make the pattern for the windscreen frame. This is made of flex ply, which is a very flexible plywood, able to get that curve. Um, for the sides, we then use a wood called gelatin, which is it's quite a soft timber actually. It's called a hardwood. As you see, it's quite a soft timber, so it's very easy to shape to get the uh, to get the correct finish that you need. Um, then we proceed to polishing this to a finished article, and then we take a mould from it to make a cast. A presto, you have a windscreen. Now, looking at the side panels, Stuart, how did you um, make those side panels? And, and secondly, um, what styling ideas did you have for them? Uh, well, I wanted the car to be contemporary. Didn't want anything that was. Uh, replica of the 60s, I wanted something sharp and modern. Um, I came up with this theme which uh, I call curved origami, because I think that's what it is really. It's very sharp points, emphasised lines. Um, once you've got that theme, it's easy to sketch it, to get the idea in your head, and then the next stage would be to make a timber pattern, or book as we call it, which is it. I mean, this is made from MDF and, and hardboard and bits of ply, uh, nothing fancy in the materials. Uh, but I managed to get the curves I was looking for and the shapes that I wanted. And um, once that's perfected, uh, you can go to the next stage, which is making a fiberglass mould from the pattern. This is the mould. This is, this is actually coated in PVA adhesive. Um, that's a release agent. Um, as you can see, that fits on as the, uh, the mould. Once the mould is released, you can go to the next stage, which is to take the cast which is the finished item, only in this case I'm still making amendments because I'm not happy with some of the lines on the car, so uh, the next stage will be to amend the mould 
so that in the future they'll all be perfect. So looking at the rear end of this new project, Stuart, did it go as well as planned? Mm, not exactly, no. Sometimes um, uh, an idea that you get in your head, by the time you put it down on paper and got a style and a theme that you want, then taking it from the paper into reality can often uh, create something that you're not really expecting. Mm. Prime example here, for instance, I fitted these light units, uh, got the styling exactly how I'd drawn it, finished article, I'm not happy with it at all. So in this particular case, I am changing the back end and it will be something like this when it's finished, but uh, tweaked. Um, hopefully that will be more pleasing when it's finished. Mm -hmm. And then looking at the rear itself, how did you make this? And, and, I mean, once, you're, once you're happy with it, where does it go from here? Well, often it's possible to cut corners and cheat with pattern making. If you've got an idea of a particular shape that you want and you find another item, maybe the bottom of a dustbin or a container, or in this case, part of an exocet rear cover, it's possible to take a small part of a casting and incorporate that into the whole design, providing the lines flow where you need them to be. If not, start with a base like this. In this particular case, I've been running lines through here so that the whole style will be cohesive from the front to the rear. And what have you been using exactly? I mean, I can see there's fiberglass there, there's filler. There's bits of everything, MDF. yeah. And I, I like to use flex ply, I like to use mm. jelly tong timber, which is good for working with. This is a, a, a precast fiberglass piece. There's some pretty solid ply, some MDF, staples, glue, nails, nothing special really. Mm. And all that can be used to then make a mould? Yep, yep. Uh, once that pattern uh, is prepared to a certain standard, then you can make a mould from it. It all depends if the mould's going to be perfect, the pattern's got to be perfect. Mm. If the pattern's not perfect, then you'll need to do a lot of work on the mould to perfect it before you take a finished item from it. And looking at the current work in progress, are you happy with what you've achieved so far? Yes, it's come together very well. Uh, there have been problems. It's not been entirely straightforward as one would like. Uh, there are a few styling tweaks to do to the side panels still. We've got to perfect the windscreen and hopefully the sight line through the screen over the bonnet is going to work. I think it will. So fingers crossed, uh, it's all looking good.